Hello. I'm doing well. You were doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes. Testing. Okay. So, I'm starting with children and talking about children because the future of our country depends on the extent to which we educate our children, we communicate to the parents of the children, whether single mothers or homes of two, that they have an obligation to give that child the best opportunity. And therefore, the opportunities for government increases. Now you live, we live in the Bahamas, and I want to be able to tell you what's happening there, island by island, uh, very quickly. As we speak to our future, as we look at the challenges, and there are two major challenges, the economy and unemployment, <coughs> and crime, and the importation of tendencies and traits similar to what we see in the United States of America with gangs, and killings where our young people are preying on each other. And I mean praying, I don't mean P-R-A-Y-E-R-I-N, -E I mean P-R-E-Y-E-R-I-N. -E <laughs> and the wanton disregard for human life is now having an extraordinary impact in terms of crime and the fear of crime in our country. And the government clearly must continue to work at strategies to deal with. But the good news is we live in a beautiful country. The island of Bimini, 50 miles off the coast of Miami. When we came to power, we had the good fortune of meeting developers who wanted to invest in Bimini. And there's a development company called Genting, one of the world's largest resort companies, if not the world's largest resort company. Over the last three years, they have spent some $600 million in Bimini, the little quaint Bimini. They have instituted in Bimini a major cruise ship that they bought and developed to ply between Fort Lauderdale and Bimini. It is projected that when it is fully in play, it will bring 400,000 people a year to Bimini. They have therefore developed facilities to accommodate that cruise ship. They have lengthened the runway and therefore introducing that. They are in the process of completing a 300 room hotel branded by Hilton. 200 rooms are now open. They have built a casino on that island and they have some seven, 800 Bahamians employed with hundreds more as the hotel expands to come. Bimini is moving along, and we are working to integrate the people of Bimini into this new economy as entrepreneurs and obviously as employees with meaningful employment. In Abaco, we have two major developments one called Winding Bay, and one called Baker's Bay. Baker's Bay is the dominant of the two, hiring some seven, 800 Bahamians, increasing 
they second homes, they, this is an island off Marsh Harbor where you go by boat to it and some of the world's leading people go there to play golf and buy homes like Michael Jordan and actresses and owners of American football teams and major golfers. Winding Bay was owned by Marriott and the Ritz Carlton and they have now sold to a new developer who's moving it wonderfully along. We are in the process of agreeing and settling a new development led by the Aman Group, which is a six-star resort group, dominant here in New York, and we should meet, I would do to meet with them, but the flight was delayed before this meeting. But they are developing a key at Abaco called Matlow's Key. So Abaco is the major second home destination in the Bahamas. And therefore, it is banging along with people of a high net worth basis, and the future looks very good. Um, we should be developing a new harbor, a Chinese construction company that was agreed by our predecessors, and we're settling that now in North Abaco um, to join the harbor in South Abaco. But Abaco is poised, I think, for significant development. Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama, again, is a very special kind of island where the Hawksville Creek Agreement was signed and you have a private company with the, uh, the people who ran it initially are now dead, Sir Jack Haywood and his family, and um, Edward St. George and his family. And we are in the process of trying to determine the future of Grand Bahama um, because what has happened is business license um, taxes and real property taxes have now become um, available to government as a tool. And the question is, what should the government do? Should we implement these taxes or do we extend them in consideration of some special thing that will take place? We're making the decision now. But when we came to power three years ago, Grand Bahama was challenged. Grand Bahama is a mix of industrial companies and tourism. And in Freeport itself, there are petrochemical companies, pharmaceutical companies, um, a shipbuilding company, as heavy industry, and of course, their hotels. We are, are slowly improving the economy of Grand Bahama. Um, we have in the making a new cruise ship destination there. We have in the making a major expansion of a huge container port that exists that should start an expansion in October, November of this year, hiring another 300 people. So we are moving, we think, properly and effectively in Grand Bahama, which is really called the second city, um, with a population base only second to New Providence. And so Grand Bahama is OK. In New Providence, we had Bahama, we had this three and a half billion dollar development 97% finished, and the developer filed for Chapter 11. The government of the Bahamas resisted that um, Delaware court, saying that all of the activities of this company was based in New Providence, therefore it should be solved and addressed by the Bahamian courts. And we tried to, we went to court to protect the sovereignty of the Bahamas. We have succeeded, and both the Bahamian court and the Delaware court has now centered the matter in there. Um, two days ago, I was in New York. I flew to New York to meet with the construction company, one of the world's leading construction, in fact, the largest construction company in the world, China Construction. And they were the contractors. And I got from them a full agreement to resume construction subject to the liquidators, the provisional liquidators who were there. Last night, I did a, you know, um, morning in China is night in the Bahamas. So, Around nine last night, I started a conference call with the president of China Export Import Bike. We spoke for 45 minutes or thereabout on this conference call where I got the agreement of the bank to work assiduously with the construction company and the government of the Bahamas and the developer um, to resume construction. So I've now met with the construction company. I have met through a conference call with the bank. 
I have met with the bank's representatives at my office yesterday lunchtime, so I only now have to meet with the developer as Prime Minister, and I'm meeting with the developer on Monday. The intention is to be able to impress upon all of the parties that the government of the Bahamas want this hotel or resort completed because there are thousands of young people who will be employed. There are 15, 1,800 now we're paying for as, as we are waiting for this to recommence construction. We believe it's going to have an enduring, an invigorating impact on the economy of the Bahamas and therefore we are committed to bringing this about. The same Chinese company contractor has purchased the Hilton or British Colonial Hotel and they're putting a major expansion to that starting now where they're going to be bringing in, I can't talk it yet, but bringing in two major hotel brands to, to be branded along with the Hilton Hotel so they're going to have two other brands to join the Hilton Hotel. And the deal we struck is different to the deal that was struck with the Chinese who built Bar Barma. The same people, when we met with the president of China, we impressed upon the president that the Bahamas, like every other Caribbean country, suffers from unemployment. And we can't have 70% Chinese labor and 30% Bahamian. It has to be reversed. And so the president agreed with me, and the government is insisting on this particular deal that is 70% Bahamian labor and 30% Chinese labor. So it is reversing the problem. <laughs> and New Providence is the center. New Providence is the capital. New Providence is where the people live. And there we are pushing this. We have Atlantis. We, we, we have we are now having this hotel. We're trying to do a deal to have the South Ocean open back up because we that's now being purchased. We have two major residential resorts, like the key that you know, and there's a new one called Albany, where some of the world's leading golfers live, where they are doing very, very well. And so things are happening in New Providence. Albany has now brought about the fact that we are now the, the strongest private jet distant, uh, destination and in the region. So things are banging along there. Now we move to Eleuthera. Eleuthera, um, again, is a, in a position where we've just announced um, that the man who reportedly the richest Colombian in the world, Dr. Sarmiento, Luis Sar Sarmiento, has agreed to put a Four Seasons five-star hotel resort development, mixed resort development, in South Eleuthera. And that will be joined on a golf course, etc. That's the old Cotton Bay. That will be joined by Franklin Wilson's development where he has brought in one of the leading resort companies out of Florida and California to, to run his properties there. So we're feeling good about Eleuthera. People are impatient. We know it's going to happen. We're about to commence building a mini hospital down there in Eleuthera, putting the infrastructure in. I've just acquired 50 acres of land. You know, we have situations where people would not don't pay the tax. We say, okay, rather than, since you've got a couple million dollars worth of land, you're not paying that, give me this land here, and then you don't have to pay the tax. And so that, that's strategically placed land where we put a sports complex. So Eleuthera is going well. So we move to Exuma. And let, let me just say also on Eleuthera, the end of Eleuthera is Harbor Island, North Eleuthera. Harbor Island has always been voted the best small destination in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of wealthy people live with Bahamians mixing well. Um, I can tell you the government of the Bahamas has committed itself to major airport development in North Eleuthera, which leads to Harbor Island, in Governor's Harbor, in San Salvador, and Exuma. So again, $150 million worth of airport development, and obviously we have to do that over a phased period of time. So we move to Exuma. You know, the astronauts say the prettiest waters in the world are around Exuma. So wherever you come from in the Bahamas, you could claim the island got something special. But Exuma, um, the emerald, you know, it, the colored water is just extraordinary. Exuma is the land of the mainland, a lot of keys. Um, Tyler Perry has bought a, a, developed a $100 million island in Exomas. Um, 
fake, a lot of movie stars and David Copperfield and Lou Shiki, a lot of na named people have bought um, keys in the Exoma keys and have become very famous for it. But what else is happening in Exoma is that we have major developments taking place in Exoma. New construction is going to take place. Um, a Swiss lady came in who is reportedly from a very um, substantial Swiss family. She wants to build the best small hotel in the world. She bought two keys, um, Children's Bay Key um, and um, William's Key. And she make putting these two keys together. She's building this wonderful facility where they'll have houses for staff and so forth. But she's <coughs> intending to have the best small hotel in the world. And they, and they brought in a whole crew of designers to do that and so forth. There are other developments taking place in Exoma. Um, the government is at an advanced stage of knowing that Sandals is in Exoma. And the owners of Sandals is talking to us now about building a beaches in Exoma. That's another resort, sister resort to Sandals. So Exoma is therefore in a strong position um, moving forward. In Cat Island, Greg, um, we have in Cat Island, um, the former government, us, we've been working with a group um, to, where they, a PGA golf course, where they want to put a PGA golf course resort there. Um, the government has agreed to build a new airport in New Bight or to renovate the airport in New Bight, in effect introduce a 10, 12 million dollar expansion of the airport there on the condition that this resort will be built. And so again, you can see as I'm talking that these are sources of, of employment for young Bahamians creating new economies in these islands as, I'm, as we're moving through. And so again, in Exoma, we're doing well. We go now to San Salvador. In San Salvador, there's an 8,000 um, feet runway where planes come in direct from Paris into this little island. That's the island, of course, where Columbus was supposed to have landed in 1492, and where um, he met the Lucayan Indians, and where there's a club med facility there. And there are plans to expand the club net facility going on now and plan to build two small hotels by Italian groups. But what we've had to do, the demands on governance is so profound that the people who are flying from Paris as prime minister, when we're coming in, we need a controlled tower because if it's raining, we need to be guided in. Having flown for nine hours, you can't reach the South and say, oh God, we can't land. So we need that. They say we need facilities at the airport. So the government has had now to go and recalibrate with a view to providing the facilities to consistent with plane flying direct from Paris to this club med facility there, direct from Montreal, direct from New York. Again, San Salvador is going well. And it's something that we're, we are looking at. And so the, the position being this, I come to Andros and I want to stop. Andros is the largest island in the Bahamas. Anyone from Andros here? This part of Andros, you find. Fresh Creek. Stand your Creek. All right. Um, the, the point is, Andros has been an island just sleeping there. A population of about 10,000 people, 104 miles long, 43 miles wide, the most extraordinary ecosystem in the world. It can be easily the fly fishing capital of the world. I've flown up here at the invitation of the University of Miami that is helping us on a table Andros, and I met some rich people who go fly fishing in Andros. They go to Cargo Creek, they go to Fresh Creek, they go, you know, they go to these places and they fly fish, catch and release. And we have some of the extraordinary fish down there. Well, Penning once made a speech. Uh, I have a dream speech. I think it was in 82, 81, 82. And he obviously had a sense that he may not see the Bahamas develop to the point that he could dream of. And in the speech he said, one day the, cap the financial capital of the Bahamas will be Nassau. The industrial capital will be Grand Baham. And he says, as America urbanizes, Florida urbanizes, the soil of Andros will lead Andros into becoming the agricultural capital for the Bahamas. 
and that we will produce in Andros. The pine trees in Andros will be used for resin and the wood and to create jobs for Bahamians. And he said, the muck or the mud on the west coast of Andros has some medicinal value to it and that will be used to have facial packs for women. The governor of the Bahamas, taking pending speech, <coughs> has in fact put a major investment in Andros, the Bahamas Agricultural and Marine Science Institute. Andros has 138,000 arable acres of land, and then we know, therefore, to sustain wonderful farming. And we decided to do something special. And that is to not only create a teaching institution, but to attach to that institution a commercial farm and marine sciences of a commercial nature. In other words, in addition to teaching, we're going to grow. And so we have now been planted papayas um, and bananas, these things where in recognition that the Bahamas spends over $1 billion every year importing foodstuffs, we say it makes sense to try and grow some of that back. So that's what we're doing now. And we are moving as quickly as we can on that area. So Andros all of a sudden is taking a different view. The Inter-American Development Bank in Washington then offered us an opportunity that they gave to Belize. They said that you have this wonderful island with ocean holes, with streams of fresh water sitting on salt water, with flamingos. Very few people having been to the west coast of Andros, just one resort out there, a small resort. You have this wonderful opportunity to extract from Andros a new economy. The Seminole Indians left Florida and went to Red Bay, St. Andros. And so you, I, I actually a descendant myself. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, I'm a, I'm a bole. My, my grandmother was a bole, and therefore, you know, old chief bole. Um, that's where they originated. And so the point, the point is that, that Andros has this history, this, the ecosystems, and so the Inter-American Development Bank gave us this sponsorship where Stanford University has been retained. Now, to come into Andros and identify in Andros all of the sustainable economic activities that could lead to jobs and new businesses. Like for example, Queen Victoria used to bathe with the velvet sponge. The velvet sponge, they say, doesn't exist now. Plenty of sponges exist down there. And so we're talking to the University of Florida to help us bring back the velvet sponge because we've entered into a new relationship with the University of Miami, University of Florida. So what is happening, therefore, is Andros is now taking on special meaning in the Bahamas. In addition to students being there, studying, and I saw in the papers today where the first graduating class will soon come out there, right? But in addition to that, we've entered into relationships, memorandum of understanding, um, College of the Bahamas, which will be the University of Bahamas later this year, University of the West Indies, University of Miami, University of Florida, and Ocean University in China. And so clearly we've laid the foundation of a big jump forward. Just off Andres, it's the third largest barrier reef in the world, a 6,000 foot trench there, an abundance of opportunities for us. And so we're looking at it. And finally, we are now trying to take advantage of the assets we have. Those students are studying the sea. Today we have 
Young people, in fact, this is one of the defining members of the maritime leadership in our country. It's a Peter Galandrus. But even though we are an ocean nation, we have not taken maximum advantage of that. And so the ship owners and the maritime flag have come and said they are, they are going to get involved with the government of the Bahamas to inspire Bahamians to get involved in the sea. And I'm told now that there are young Bahamians, including women, who are working on ocean flying vessels around the world. And that's what they, these young people here are going to do. So you, yeah, my, look here, you want to be an engineer, or what you want to be sure you have? <laughs> uh, what? Jack's side, captain. Captain? And, and what, and what behind you, what do you want to be? Captain. What? Captain. Look here. Sorry, I also want to be a captain. Listen, I just look, you look at him. And you ain't talking about captain in Nassau, you know. We're talking about captain somewhere in the world on one of these major ships. That's the aspiration. That is the aspiration. That is the dream. And we are now putting in place for it to be real. Now, and so as we leave Andros and we look at the rest of the Bahamas, to those of you from the southern Bahamas, Maguana, Crooked Island, Acklands, and now 